to the latest on Jay Slater, the 19-year-old from Lancashire who's gone missing in Tenerife. And his mother says the continued search for her son is an absolute living nightmare. And Jay was last heard from on Monday morning after telling friends he'd take the 11-hour walk back to his hotel. Well, I'm joined in the studio by our reporter, Charlie Peters. Charlie, um, a distressing case, one that's mm. gripping the nation. What's the latest? Well, you've just heard that Jay Slater's mother is described as a living nightmare. Well, Jay's best friend, Lucy, who's on the island, has said that she doesn't believe that the Spanish police are doing enough in this case. And she has urged in the last few hours for British police to fly out to the Canary Islands to support this search on Tenerife. She said that they're asking many of the same questions they originally asked on Monday when Lucy first reported Jay as missing and that also they haven't yet facilitated a translator for many of the Spanish-speaking police officers and the civil guard search and rescue teams to interact more smoothly with Lucy. So quite a bold call to ask for the British to come and support this operation. Now, she says that the last she heard from him was at 8.15 when Jay had 1% battery on his phone. He said at the time on the phone that he, uh, he had a cut on his leg from a cactus and, as you said, he was going to make an 11-hour walk towards their accommodation. Now, on the timeline, as we understand it, he was at the Energy Festival with his friends on Sunday evening, last year in a Snapchat around 8.45 p.m., and it's understood that he left the festival with two others to go to an undisclosed location, possibly for a party after the party. Now, what's been said about that is that those two individuals who are with Jay, potentially the last people to have seen him, have now left the island. We're just learning that in the last few hours. And they've left, according to Lucy, without the police on Tenerife speaking to them. So quite a critical piece of information. Right now, the search continues in northwest Tenerife in the rural Deteno area. That's where his phone signal was last seen at 8.50 on Monday morning. Now, since Tuesday at 1.45 p.m., that's when the Spanish Civil Guard on Tenerife were activated to support this case, including a helicopter, drones, sniffer dogs, and four separate units of specialist mountain rescue teams Today's been described as a critical day in that search, and it continues. Charlie Peters, thank you for that update. I'm now joined by Charlie Hedges, who's a missing persons expert. Charlie, welcome to the show. You've heard all the evidence that we have laid out to us there by Charlie Peters. Is that allegation from the friend fair, do you believe, that the Spanish authorities aren't doing enough? And is there any capacity in cases like this for the British police to go abroad to assist? Uh, it's difficult to say just uh, how well the investigation is being conducted. I, I'm not there. I wouldn't like to speculate. Uh, so uh, that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, certainly there is a precedent for UK police going out to support these sort of things, but there are a number of legal, le legal loopholes to jump through before they get there, um, but it's not unheard of for sure. And in terms of the the response, the drones, the dogs, the, the, the ground units, again, echoes of Michael Mosley, this is standard procedure. What would you be doing um, in circumstances like this? Now, knowing the evidence, the last locations, the phone going dead, that's a crucial piece uh, of information, the lack of the ability to trace somebody at that point. What would be your moves if you were conducting this investigation, Charlie? Well, there are, there are two facets. Really. One is the, the physical search of the ground using the resources that they have um, and making sure that is properly structured and uh, they're looking in the, in the right areas. And the other side is uh, answering some of the questions uh, that have been raised in your early report about the two uh, people who allegedly took uh, Jay away from the party, uh, why they've left the island, what's going on there, where did they take him? Um, we've heard stuff about him getting on, possibly getting on a bus or not getting on a bus. All these things are critical to understand what's going on. I mean, you need to know the individual who's gone missing and his circumstances and what's caused him to go missing to delve into that and then try to put a, an investigation search strategy together based on that information. And surely as a matter of urgency, those two individuals, they are absolutely key in this investigation. If they are some of the last people that may have seen him, before his disappearance, they must be tracked down and questioned as a matter of urgency, surely? Absolutely, yes. I mean, they, they are critical to this to understand. It may be perfectly innocent, but are there, there are unanswered questions which need to be looked at to understand what's gone on. Why did he go with them? Where did they go to and why have they left the island? Is that planned or is it rather sudden? 
we know, need to know those answers. And in terms of the terrain this time of year, I mean, I've been to Tenerife. It's a very unforgiving terrain, incredibly hot this time of year. Again, echoes of the Michael Mosley case. Um, you'd hope that there's some kind of shelter or something because it's incredibly unforgiving out there. Absolutely. It's very rugged terrain. Uh, you need to uh, refresh yourself with water regularly. Obviously, food is another consideration, shelter, and uh, make it... And, it has a, a, a devastating impact on the body while you're uh, physically exerting yourself. And so we need to, um, to to search urgently to try and find him and locate him as soon as possible. OK, well, Charlie Hedges, who's a missing persons expert. Thank you for your expertise. And also thanks again to Charlie Peters for joining me.